afternoon, welcome to the M6. Uh, welcome to another video today. We're on the road to Anglesey. So we started at 7 a.m. in the morning, and I think, well, it says 5:20 right now. We're probably looking at least 6 p.m. after maybe a stop in there as well. But we've got the KA behind all of the bags behind us here on the trailer ready for another race weekend so we're going to be racing with the CSCC once again a bit like we did at Snetterton a few months back obviously the K is probably only going to be in a class of itself but it is what it is after last week with the the Honda at Castle Coombe we kind of probably thought that's going to be its last race so we're good to go here with the 4k I think this is going to be its penultimate event here at Anglesey one at Snetton in a few weeks time but it's our first time ever going here we're making a little bit of a trip out of it so this is Thursday yes <laughs> Thursday and we've got nothing really on tomorrow we're just gonna have a, a look around and then we've got Saturday and Sunday race on each day and then on Monday we're gonna travel home so it's quite nice off Anglesey to allow us to turn up early and leave a little bit late as well because I think they probably realise it's a long way away for most people, but we're stuck in traffic here on the M6. I think that was to be expected. Um, can't be paying that £10 for uh, the, the M6 toll. 163 miles to go. We'll probably update you a little bit later on. We're following this fantastic Vauxhall right now. I don't know whether John can pan up and show the, the viewers there. <laughs> Some lovely pops and bangs coming out of that. Uh, so. We'll see you soon. We'll give you an update when we're a bit closer to the track. I don't think we anticipated quite how long this journey to Wales would be, but along the way there were some cool sights, especially towards the end of the journey when we were driving through Wales. Some spectacular scenery, some pretty impressive infrastructure as well. And then we get to Anglesey around 7 p.m. So we've arrived at Anglesey and even though it might look quite dark, it's only even before eight o'clock, it's not even that late, but we're all set up camp and looking forward to it. It's like a pretty cool track. So the, the format of this weekend is that we're racing on Saturday and Sunday, two 40 minute races and uh, qualifying on a Saturday as well. And there's night races, which I decided not to do, but they're part of this weekend. So that's quite exciting, but it's a Thursday right now. So we've got some stuff to do tomorrow. We thought we'd just check out the local area obviously it's been quite a while since any of us did anything proper in terms of i guess this is kind of like a holiday but uh yes yeah, so we've got thursday till monday here so i guess just make the most of it there's some pretty epic you probably got already see it scenery behind there like snowdonia and so on is in in that direction so we're going to check that out tomorrow a few cool places to to look at but yeah hopefully in the morning get up there is some testing going on tomorrow i decided not to do that um I thought we are going to get a lot of running in this weekend, uh, hopefully, and so we'll just try and enjoy it and learn fr from th those experiences, but I might try and do a quick track cycle before before anything happens tomorrow morning, so I'm going to get up early, like 6 o'clock in the morning, It'll probably be still a little bit dark, but I'll try and do some laps um, before if they want to clear the course to go testing, so yeah, we'll have a day tomorrow just exploring a local area. Um, I don't know what we're going to do tonight. Maybe find some chips or whatever, or something for, for, for dinner, something quick and easy. Or maybe even try and walk the track, because it's quite cool out there. But uh, yeah, we'll check in tomorrow morning. We might do a bit of exploring from Wales, and I might try and bring you along with me. So day two here at Anglesey. This is Friday. Uh, we've got Friday testing going on behind us here. So. We're not out there today, I decided against it. There was fully the option to do it, but I thought, nah, I'm just gonna learn it in, in qualifying. I'm probably gonna be in a group of myself or maybe one or two others. So it's it's unlikely I'm gonna have too many people to race against, unfortunately. So it's all gonna be about sort of time trialing over the weekend uh, regardless. But there's some really cool stuff out here. We had the first session a little while back. Uh, there's stuff like TVRs, there's a Porsche out there, there's some supercharged minis. A nice, a nice mix. There is a lot of caterums here, uh, for whatever reason. I'm not too sure why. I, I didn't realise that their CSE's championship was that big here, but it is. There's a lot of them here, or maybe they're just all the ones are going out testing. I'm not sure, but uh, it's cool to see all the cars out there. It's a Janetta G20, I'd like to say. And then 
there's some cool stuff over there. I see an R32 Skyline and some of the, the more classic stuff as well. Sort of 60s and 70s sports and racing cars, which is you know, quite special, quite special. Um, we're going to go out for the day though and just have a look around the local area. John wants to see a, a local Air Force base. I want to go to somewhere over there. Look at that Porsche. That Porsche is awesome. Uh, I want to go over to Snowdonia somewhere. There's a few places I came at the start of last year before the first lockdown that I really want to just go back and see again if possible. But the weather over there, not great. Uh, we'll see what we're going to do. We're going to go out in a minute, but regardless, looking forward to today. Of course, the racing will start tomorrow. We decided to go for a drive around the Snowdonia area. I actually came to this exact place at the start of 2020 before we had any idea of a global pandemic in February and some pretty impressive views back then. I was hoping for some slightly better weather considering we're sort of at the end of the English summer, maybe even going to autumn. So maybe that is the good reason for all this low level cloud and not especially bright and beautiful conditions, but it was all right. It was a good day in terms of exploring the area. And in the afternoon, I decided to go to somewhere I visited last year and I found it really sort of interesting. It wasn't much of a walk as well. It was sort of a, I think like a slate mine. It was pretty impressive. It was near a town called Lambiris. Now I'm probably butchering all of the names. I know I'm not, not the best with pronunciations at the best of times, but it was a nice little walk. And we went to a viewpoint at the end of this sort of, I guess, closed mine. And you can have a nice view over Lambiris and the, the lakes over there. So it's a pretty cool area and you can walk up there. There's no charges or anything. It was pretty impressive. I mean, I know we had the cloud cover, but still, the sights and scenery around here were pretty impressive so it was definitely worth spending the afternoon going up here and kind of the only sort of holiday I've had over the last year and a half so it's pretty nice to see some sights and scenes again. Something else that was becoming a little apparent around this time was there were warnings of fuel shortages and so on in, in the UK. I think it was more the delivery of the fuel rather than a fuel shortage but regardless we were slightly worried about this luckily the ka doesn't use much fuel but it was on our minds for sure so here we are at anglesey for our first day of action here the track i've never been on before this will be my first time ever driving the track in terms of racing games and real life obviously we had the the track day test day that they put on yesterday which we didn't decide to do it's my first laps in qualifying will be my first lap ever around this track uh, which is fine. I don't think I've ever driven on any sort of game either, so it will literally be the first time, which is, you know, a little bit crazy, I, I realise, but it's going to be an interesting experience. I think we're in a class of maybe one or two, so yeah, there's not going to be many people to race with, but because of the situation with the Honda, regardless, I haven't really got much choice. So here we are, we're, we're angle seat and we're racing in the tin tops in the Ford K. I think it looks like it's going to be a fun track to just drive, which is a bit like Cadwell Park when I was by myself. And it was still fun because the track was just so enjoyable. It looks like a, a similar sort of situation here. When I was at Snetterton by myself, actually in the same series, uh, CSCZ Tin Tops, it was a little bit more boring just because the track is, in my opinion, a little bit less interesting in a low powered car. Snetterton, I'm sure it's fun in a fast car because there are some big straights there, you can get some big top end speed. But in the KA, it struggled to be a really interesting track, Snetterton, but I look forward to doing it maybe in the future in a, in a different car. Might be a situation like that in a few weeks time. But uh, yeah, regardless, just watching out some of the early sessions here. It's a bit, bit gray, a bit cloudy but I don't think it's due to rain. That's what the boy the men's told us. No rain expected today, but you know, I'm keeping my eyes out. Pretty spectacular view around here. I would have shown you in all the shots yesterday, some really awesome places just to go and walk. You know, I mean, just 30 minutes, mainly back to the mainland around here. There's just some really epic places. So yeah, our stuff finishes at 3 p.m. tomorrow. So I don't know what we're gonna do. I mean, we're not gonna drive home. We're definitely staying here for the Sunday night. 
unless we get kicked out, but I don't think that's gonna be the case. Uh, so we might even just go and have a look around some of the other stuff that we can, but yeah, what an awesome place this is. Can't wait to get out on track and just turn some laps. But yeah, it's good for myself, John and Dad, to sort of have a look around the track, just because at the end of the day, when you're out on track, obviously it's a completely different perspective, but it's good fun to, to watch when you can as well. That's a lot of rambling. I think it's time for me to go out there and do some driving. So, see you out on track. So for the recurring theme of a qualifying session where I say I was a bit nervous going into qualifying, but maybe a bit less so here today in Anglesey. For whatever reason, I was feeling quite calm and a bit relaxed. I knew this was going to probably be the last time I drove this Ford KA. So just go out there, enjoy it, and see what you can do. So we were actually the last to the assembly area because we were based over in the extra area, the overflow area, and we didn't hear any sort of announcements for the whole weekend, which was a little bit unfortunate. And I think they actually were running ahead of schedule by a good amount by this stage of the weekend. We were the last qualifying session out there. So that was a little bit annoying to be so late into the assembly area, but we still had enough time. It was still about five or six minutes, but you know, you never want to put the marshals under pressure like that. Of course, they're having to spend their days doing this for us. They're taking their days off either work or spending their spare weekends at a racetrack. So always try and do my best to make their life as easy as possible. Regardless, we're going out here for 30 minutes of qualifying at Angle C. As I said, we were the last session of the day in terms of qualifying and our race will be the last one of the day before the night races later on as well. So we exit the pit lane here, going down towards what is turn two in this corner it doesn't really show particularly well on video but it's actually really quite banked it's quite a special corner actually i had looked at it a little bit when we walked the track but still driving it you're like wow this actually does have quite a bit of camber to it quite an impressive corner here now as we would come around here up to turn number three i'd see this toyota driving quite slowly on the inside here of course i'm just trying to get my bearings of this track having no real idea about where to really go except from the little bit we did walk at the end of the previous day but he pulled off into the pit lane and I could just go out there and try and explore the track try and understand where the braking points could be because anyone that's driven a Ford KA one of these race enduro cars knows that you can leave your braking pretty late and the tires the grip they have underneath you will do a pretty good job of getting you around the corner with minimal or no braking so it's building yourself up to be confident in it. Weirdly, it's, it is definitely a good car for beginners, but at the same time, I think to be really good at it, it does take a very big skill, actually, this car. And I'm not saying I'm anywhere near that, don't get me wrong. But I think that to be quick in the enduro car series, you actually have to be really, really brave because you're leaving your braking later than you would in any other car and you're taking possibly more momentum through the corner relative to the speed around the rest of the track than you would in any other car so it's it's actually quite a tricky car to be very very quick in and that's why i have a lot of i guess aberration for the guys that are very quick in enduro car because i don't think i'd be anywhere near that level so here we are i think this is our fastest lap here and it wasn't especially great but i was starting to understand where the braking points would be I was actually in the end of the day in a class of my own which was a bit of a shame there is actually a specific class for these sorts of cars in the cscc i'm not sure that will be the the case going forward because it hasn't really had much entries but regardless it was a really nice friendly atmosphere to be a part of i enjoyed this track the layout of the weekend being able to watch a lot of the racing as well as doing my own racing myself it's it's casual whilst being serious in the right areas if that makes any sense it's a really well run organization i think the cscc and definitely somewhere i'd like to race in 2022 as well now unfortunately for me we were doing the full layout of angle c and this includes this part of the track here rather than a, a bit of a corkscrew like section down to the last corner so these big old straights aren't great in the ka i can't lie and actually they are changing it to the other layout for the 2022 season i've got my fingers crossed that maybe i can do that event again but 2022 is going to look quite busy with formula one work and other racing stuff as well so hopefully i can get there but it's not a guaranteed one that's for sure 
down to the final corner here as the weekend went on I was getting more confident braking into here you can see most certainly I'm not very aggressive on the steering wheel here but I'm just still I'd say not really that confident in the car to be able to push to 100% I still think I'm only already 90% I mean I was getting turn one flat out and so on but still wasn't quite there in the overall picture so wasn't super impressed with my lap time but I think the general feeling of the car was good there was quite a lot of wind out there because you're right on the coast so I guess that never really goes away but in general I think I was not too disappointed it was kind of exactly where I'd expected to be by the end of this session here and the session would actually end a little bit early and we'll go on board with my camera view here my dad actually did get a picture from the outside from this as well but what I was doing at the end of the session here was just doing a bit of a drive through the pit lane so my intention was here to drive through the pit lane sort of time myself and get an idea about how long the pit stop will be because the 40 minute races would include a pit stop but as we'd come out the end of the pit lane we'd figure out that there was a bit of an issue out on track and there would be a red flag as soon as I got out there essentially so as I exit the pits lane here you can see the green light is still showing so we're all good here I exit and go but as we see just to the track in front of us you'll see a blue Citroen Saxo parked horizontally across the track so that caused a red flag pretty much as soon as I got out onto the racetrack so still I got my timing of the, the pit lane pretty well I think we were pretty good for the race there I got an idea about how long that drive through would take but we missed I think five or six minutes at the end of the session because of this red flag at the end but of course everyone's safety is the main important thing here and so there's a red flag incident like that of course they're going to try and just move on to the next session or whatever it was maybe lunch I think possibly after this one so that's qualifying done here at Anglesey for our first session of the day. We were the last group, so we actually qualified around midday. So it's quite late, but regardless, I think our session was shortened a bit because there was a, a red flag near the end of the session. And I guess they just decided to call it quits death qualifying as we were the last session and had lost already about, I don't know, 10, maybe even 15 minutes at the start of the day. So that, that's fair enough. I think it was still long enough to understand uh, you know, which way the track went because obviously these were my first laps around Anglesey. Uh, seemed alright, didn't obviously have much to pace myself against. It's, it's, it's a fun track, I mean you don't really ever see it in like video games or even like mods of video games like Car Factor. So I don't think I've ever actually driven it before which is weird, I don't think I can say that about any other circuit that I've been to so far. but. Regardless, happy with how it went, the car felt all good. You do definitely feel, I think it's turn three, which turns into like turn four or five. You notice the wind, there's a lot of wind coming in from the sea because I think that's the closest point you are to the ocean. So that's where you're feeling it, the side force. And of course the K has some plastic panels, which obviously with the wind, the wind, the wind, the wind gets under there, obviously they're rattling about a little bit more than if they were bit of a heavier material regardless we're out here just watching some of the racing there's the great thing I think about the CSCC and how the schedule was laid out is that you know we had a, a long build up before my qualifying session and then had the qualifying session and then there's a long break until the next one and obviously we've got the bonus of night races today which I'll try and get some video of because it'd be quite just cool to, to show you I know I know they've got a, a great set of guys already around the track doing filming stuff but obviously I'd like to just have it for the memories in my uh, my own personal collection of videos so yeah not long to go now before our race or well, I say that it's still, still like two hours but regardless I'll finish our race finishes at about 7 p.m. just before the night race practice starts but uh, yeah really enjoying it here today at Anglesey I mean as I can't really say much for the qualifying session because I really have nothing to base myself against here I think we are the only person in class which is it is what it is but I'm having fun out there and I think I guess that's the main thing really most what you want to you want to enjoy your racing so that's good and can't wait for the race which is coming up at around 6 p.m if I remember correctly should be fun so it's race time here at angle C we were the last session of the regular day as mentioned there was some night racing going on after us so I think our race started around sort of half five six it was getting quite late you can see the sun is starting to set over there in the Welsh skyline and 
Of course, we were at the back of the grid. That's fully to be expected. And of course, there's a bit of a gap to the cars in front. But it, it wasn't crazy. It wasn't like 20 seconds. I think it was only 10 seconds to the next car. And if you think about it, this car is like 60 horsepower. Everything else out there has probably got 130, 40 at, at a push for the minimum. So I think... I'm not too disappointed with that. Of course, I'd like to be further up the order, but I'm not racing against anyone here. I'm in a car to myself. I've just got to go out there, basically time trial, hot lap, and enjoy myself. And if I'm doing that, at the end of the day, that's all I can do. So we're going to speed through the first lap here, or I guess we'll formation lap, because we did actually get a formation lap, which I was a little bit surprised about, considering the structure of the weekend. But they did a really good job. They kept the schedule. And you can see here, as we fly through the formation lap, this is probably the sort of speed of a, a normal race car around this track, probably. Um, but yeah, you can see a lot of cement dust down there from one of the previous races, dropping quite a bit of fluid through there. So I think actually there was a bit, a bit of a hold up before this one, so they were a bit keen to get us out there before the sun set, because I don't think it was mandatory to have the race lights working, possibly, in this. But of course, if you're racing in the night time, that would be the case. And Actually, this one was a standing start, whereas Sneston was a rolling start. And you can see, actually, I don't get a terrible start here in comparison to the cars in front. But as we get to sort of 30 miles an hour, then the, the guys in front start to pull away here. So at this point, just head down, try and hit my marks and just get through the opening few laps clean. Because, of course, there could be incidents around us that we've got to keep our eye on. Make sure that we don't get involved with because, of course, we will be... A good chunk back from the next car so anybody recovering from a spit or incident might not be expecting us here so of course we've got to make sure we're aware of that but the opening corner seemed pretty clean here good job from everyone around there were some actually impressive stories from this particular race here so if you want to go and check out the cscc website there's some pretty impressive information about this race about drivers coming back after their car failing in qualifying come back in a different car and doing a great job here so there's some really actually interesting stories here which are nice job over on the CSCC website to, to detail all that sort of stuff but our opening lap here was nice and clean here I wasn't obviously going crazy I knew that the tires we were running which is the Nankang NS2Rs they do take a little bit of time to heat up even in a car like this where you can certainly go full lock a lot of the time and it will probably heat them up quite well I did want to make sure that I didn't do anything too mad here in the early stages but we're gonna go to the rear facing camera which I'm not going to use too much because it didn't record in the best of quality, but it was about, I think, four or five laps on this not particularly long track before we start to see cars coming up in our rear view mirror. And you can just see the pace differential. So just stick to one side, Alex. Make sure that you get out of their way. Don't disturb them because there were some pretty impressive battles out there on track for position. A really competitive field actually within the tin top so i was actually quite happy to secure my place because at the end of the day there were a lot of people wanting to race at this event so i was happy to get my entry in for the ford ka but you can see the sun is definitely starting to set so that was becoming an issue i did actually have a tinted visor on this bell helmet that i run i'm not sure whether i'm going to change that for next year because i actually have a bit of a problem with it where i can't actually get the tinted visor off because all of the the stuff is rounded off but that's a story for another day but it definitely helped me in these conditions here where the sun was very low in the sky and you can see actually there's a car off there on the left hand side of the track and i think that does actually cause a safety car early on in this race which i think we see on the left here you can see i'm zooming in safety car yellow flag but someone didn't get that message flying past which I wasn't too impressed about but whatever we can't change it now it didn't seem the brightest move there considering there was a car stop just on the earlier part of that section of track but we decided to come in the plan was always to pit as soon as the pit window opened which I think was 15 minutes and that's the plan we continued on with but this time it sort of lined up with a safety car which means that we saved a little bit of time which doesn't matter too much because of course we're not really racing with anyone but it's still cool to not be so many laps down. So at the end of the lap, we would pull into the pit lane as with all of the cars in front of us. You can see we're only sort of fifth or sixth in the queue. You can see the flashing lights of the safety car just in front of us here. So everyone decides to pull into the pit lane. This Saxo, once again, quite late pulling into the pit lane, took a very wide line and a bit of the old exit of the curb to come into the pits, but he decided to come in. And as you can see, all of us are rolling down the pit lane now and I was based towards the end of the pits. You'll see Dad down the end there. I'll pull in 
then I will wait for around a minute and 45 I think it was because the pit lane wasn't actually that long so you can see dad there towards the end of the pit lane and then we're just pulling in here and then stopping just behind this yellow Civic so I had a chat to him and then nearly two minutes later I would pull out the pits I would have lost a couple of positions here because I was making sure that I let a few cars behind me pass but as we come out of the pit lane here, I think we were back to green flag racing, the safety car was in, so we'd, we timed it quite well actually, we did our safety car pit stop and we came out and we were racing again, so it kind of all worked out quite well, I think we essentially only lost really about a lap, all things considered, because of the way the track is laid out, so that wasn't too bad, we'd come out of the pits and I could go racing once more, and at this point I was just trying to get consistent go a bit quicker and just generally enjoy the layout of the track because it is a fun place to race at even if you're not really particularly racing anyone it's a fun place to drive so i thoroughly enjoyed just driving around here especially if the sun was setting as well but of course my main attention was the cars behind here so you can see in my mirror some lights coming up behind me so i'm indicating to the right to say that that's the way I'm going. I think this was some of the leading cars here. I was slightly squeezed onto the grass there, but of course they're all racing for the top position, so I can understand maybe they're not fully focused on the slow Ford K at the side there. But just like the Snetterton race with the CSCC, it was quite frantic. The Snetterton track's obviously a lot longer as well, so I was looking my mirrors quite a bit around here at Anglesey. Of course, cars catching me quicker because of the way that the track is, the shorter layout of it in comparison. So. I was having to look at my mirrors quite a bit, I did manage a couple of clean laps here but as you can see in this footage here, the next slowest cars were kind of the Puma Cup cars that were mixed into this class, the Anglesey race and in a straight line they're not actually drastically quicker so we'd come around here at the end of sort of the GP section of this track, adding on the, the two longer straights and I let some of the leading Puma Cup cars through and I actually had to back off quite significantly here to, to let them through without getting in their way because they're really battling for their class victory so I didn't want to get in the way especially because that was so close it was really nice to see them actually so close out there on track so I'm uh, hoping that one day maybe I'll get the chance to race in the Puma Cup that'd be a quite a cool opportunity because as you know I really enjoyed racing or testing the Puma I should say very early on in my motorsport amateur career I'd like to go back actually to be fair it'd be nice to drive that car once more this was a section of track that I think worked quite well with the KA because whatever horsepower you have you can't go particularly quick so it's the quick turn up here it's sort of I guess you'd say like a 110 degree corner and then back on yourself once more so you're really throwing it in and it's quite fun in the KA to really sort of throw it left and then right but regardless we were getting towards the end of this race here because let's be perfectly honest it was little bit driving around on myself and just getting out of people's way which I guess isn't the most exciting thing so we'll skip a little bit further onto this one so I think this possibly is coming up to the Checo flag so we're going up to the final corner hitting the brakes as hard as possible shifting down you can see some lights in my mirror here so I think that's going to be a car that blasts past before the start finish line there's the Checo flag and up to the line we go and we finish the only person in our class so Yet again, we win our class of one, but I was pretty happy with that. It was a good fun race out there. I'd improved my lap times by a couple of seconds as well, which was really the most I could ask for in this situation. So on the cool down lap, just thank you all the marshals and everyone that had come out to watch because actually there was, a, there was actually a decent crowd there, all things considered, because of course it isn't like a, a huge event, but there was actually quite a lot of spectators there, which was quite nice as well. So rolling back to our place in the pan, you can see how busy it was at Anglesey. I mean, the CSEC holds some big events and this isn't one of the bigger ones because of the location of the circuit and you can see how packed the paddock was. I think lots of people wanted to take, take this opportunity to have a, a weekend away and that's what they implemented into their weekend of racing. So that was quite good to see, but quite a busy little overflow area, which is where we were located. So I hope everyone managed to park up all right. But Regardless, it was quite late in the day, so I didn't actually get around to recording an outro to the first part of the weekend. So I went out and filmed some of the night racing footage here. This is just stuff I took on my phone, and it's not come out in particularly great quality because I guess it couldn't deal with the low light conditions especially well. But it was nice to see the cars around out on track. There was some really interesting stuff there. Braving 
the dark conditions and I'm talking really quite late here I think we were racing until like 10 30 p.m 11 p.m so we're getting close to midnight which is I think the latest I've ever stayed up to watch a race in real life I mean there is an opportunity to do a 24 hour race in 2022 but we'll see whether we go for that or not but some cool shots nonetheless to see these cars out on track some really special cars out there some GT4 machinery some Janettas and some really impressive tin tops out there in the more modern race as well so that was cool to see it was getting a bit cold by this time I can't lie but it was still good to get out there and watch these cars it's always nice to see something different in motorsport and that is most certainly the case watching stuff in the dark I did my best to venture around the whole track and find little locations to watch the cars but we will fade in to the Sunday race where we just had a race so everyone would start the event around 10 a.m. and then we'd just go through all of the five or six sessions and everyone would have a 40 minute race and then the weekend would be complete so we were last once again as I mentioned we were the tin tops which were the last session of the weekend in every single time so be interesting to see how we go this time we're not having to face the sun setting but we were actually having to face the sun being quite bright in the sky there it was actually a lot brighter the day than it was the day previous so i was hoping that track temps would be a little bit higher and maybe that could allow us to get some decent lap times on the board but regardless we're rolling onto the grid here and we're not actually going to be last on the grid because there are a couple of mechanical failures and incidents in that first race which meant there was about three or four cars behind us as we'd roll onto the grid here so i did have an important decision to make here would i start from my grid slot or should i go into the pit lane because behind me there were some really quick cars and i didn't want to get in their way because i knew they were going to be significantly faster off the start so they probably didn't really want to be dodging around a ka which is obviously going significantly slower so in the end i did make the decision to start from the pit lane it's always good to start on the grid of course and be involved with all of the action but i thought because the cars behind me were quick there were some cars that could probably win the, the race starting behind me here they didn't want to be dodging around me at the start so I made the sort of sacrifice of starting on the grid just to make sure that I didn't get involved with any possible incidents on the start just because this car is significantly slower. I was in the Honda, I would probably be fine because I know the car's more similarly paced but here I was a bit worried about cars sort of trying to fly across the front of me and possibly create an accident which definitely didn't need to be the case so I decided to put into the pit lane here it wasn't really going to affect my race as mentioned as in a class of one racing around by myself because even the Puma Cup cars that were in front of me were a good chunk faster than me over a lap here so I decided to pull into the pit lane go to the end and start the race from there bit of a sacrifice yes but I think for everyone it was probably the best decision just to get rid of a layer of risk here at the start of this race at Anglesey because let's be honest most of us had a long journey back at the end of this one so we didn't want to be going back with the car with damage so we'd roll to the end of the pit lane and we now would have a little bit of a wait for the race to start on our right hand side so they'd have to get gridded up then the lights would go out then all of the cars cross the line then I think we'll be able to go racing so it's a little bit of a wait here at the end of the pits but to be perfectly honest I think it was the best solution all things considered yeah okay I might have lost an extra 10 seconds out on track but I think for the overall solution of the race I think it was best just to get out of any possible incident light goes green and we go out the pits and you can see we haven't really lost that much time to the back end cars here so it's not terrible in terms of time lost here and if anything we've only lost maybe really two or three seconds like realistically so i think it is definitely the best idea so we get out warm those tires up we'd have the one warm-up lap but here we want to get that warmth into those front tires here and generally we felt pretty good throughout the race here we had a bit of vibration in the first race but it was nothing too traumatic but through the second race it was all good we'd found it was just a little bit of rubber build up through the tyres going offline to let people buy I picked up quite a lot of that hot sticky rubber on the tyres and that had meant that I had the vibrations throughout the race now a bit of a lock up here going a bit wide I think I had seen the cars in my mirror they were actually not that close but I possibly just braked a little bit late out of being caught a little bit unaware by these cars I think these were the leaders coming through here got the black Clio I think was leading the race here he goes by and there's actually a, a bit of a gap before the next car comes by so we're not going to wait for him to come past because 
We'll be here all day if we're waiting to see every car come past me. So, as we come around the final corner here, we're going to be going into the pits at the end of this next lap here. So I'm just going to show you my full in-lap here so you can see a look to the left. Give me that a thumbs up because he's putting out the pit board. We were waiting at the end of the pit lane once more. I was trying to base myself in the pit lane at the quietest possible place so that we didn't get involved with any sort of pit lane shenanigans like we saw in the GT Cup at Snetterton earlier on this year. I mean, I know that's a very, very rare occurrence, but of course, you still don't want to be involved with any pit lane incident because they're always a little bit scary. So this is my in-lap at Anglesey. So we're through the bank turn, through this flat right-hander. Most of this opening part of the lap is pretty much flat out, except from, I guess you'd say, turn two, the bank turn, where you're sort of backing off a little bit. But still, I'm taking quite a lot of entry speed through there, but it's just keeping that momentum and getting the right line because the exit curb definitely comes at you a bit quicker than you'd expect. It's sort of a bit of a tighter exit than you would have thought through that part of the track. But up here, hard braking. There'll be a sharp left here, and you can see we've let this Alfa Romeo pass this in. And it's not really getting away from us too much through this part of the track, as mentioned. You only can really go a certain speed through these sequence of corners because of just the nature of them. They're so tight and twisty. So we're letting another car pass here. I think it's a Fiesta. So we get past. That's quite okay. There we go for the apex once more. And I don't know. It's just out of that corner there as we go down towards the sea. That was the corner that I was always just finding like, ugh, I need that extra power. I don't know. That's the that's the one corner I was just feeling it for some reason, just that lack of power as you'd head towards the sea. But you can see just in front of us, a car off, and also, just ahead of that, yellow flag and a safety car board. So once more, we're going to be making our pit stop under the safety car. So that's good for the overall time. We're not going to be losing as many laps because, of course, the race is controlled under the safety car. You can't be making any overtakes, but you can still make your pit stop in this series. So. That's what we decided to do. I'd already made that plan. Like in the first race, just pit as soon as the pit window opens. 15 minutes into this race, get our pit stop out the way. I was hoping that it would be quieter in this time of the race because most people will aim for that halfway point, especially if they're sharing, to allow 50-50 driving time. But for me, I just wanted to make sure the pit stop was done and it was out of our way for the rest of this race. But just luck would have it would actually coincide with the safety car on both occasions here. We've got a couple of people just walking in the middle of the pit lane, which isn't ideal, but we'd pull into our pit stall at the end of the pit lane, give Dad a thumbs up, and we'd just wait then for the safety car to come around, pick up the pack, and whilst all that is happening, we will just sit in the pit lane and have our two minutes or so stop. And that would go all right. We'd actually pretty much get onto the two minute marker this time rather than last race where we were a little bit over to let a few cars behind through because I didn't want to get involved with too many people's battles so I gave it an extra 10 or 15 seconds but that pit stop went all right so I was pretty happy with that and then the rest of the race was just trying my best to put in consistent lap times I think through race one and race two we actually did put in pretty consistent lap times through both and i think there's only a couple of tenths of a second between them and i'd gained a couple of seconds over my qualifying time so i was quite happy about that and overall just doing i think a decent job in the second race bringing it home try and find the limits with the car and just generally enjoy myself which i definitely did in this one so bigger picture i think i was pretty happy with how the weekend went I was quite happy to see the improvement in the lap times, which was definitely something after qualifying I was really hoping for because I felt like I was quite off the pace in that one. But through the races, we found a bit of time, which was all good. And actually just enjoying this track because the start of the season, I had no plans at all to come to Anglesey. It's a very long way away from where we are in the south of England. And I definitely didn't expect to be making this journey to Anglesey. Probably one of the longest journeys of the season, if you exclude not kill and possibly possibly croft as well they're they're the, probably the two that are further away but regardless i was really happy to have made this journey the weather was pretty decent all weekend you saw before the weekend in the day that there was testing out on track which we didn't do on the friday i didn't have the best conditions out there on our journey but for the racing i think it was pretty good we got to have two days no rain yeah there was a lot of wind but in general it was it's pretty much all you could ask for for Anglesey in Wales in the end of September. I think we were pretty happy with how the weather all played out. So let's ride on board here for my fastest lap of this weekend. 
would like to just highlight it's not especially good but flat out through turn one here I had built up the confidence over this weekend to just keep the, the throttle down through there and you can see I'm being able to change my visor through there as well so through the bank turn trying to get a wider line at a later apex into the corner because I was washing out early into this curb running over that curb in the KA when you're going at such a slow speed isn't ideal because it seems to go on forever flat out through this right hander here we've got the C to our left hand side here just behind the bank so you're getting quite a lot of wind disturbance as you go through there so it always feels a little bit twitchy and I'm sure that's the case at even higher speeds as well so flat out through here at the right hander as well then I was trying my best to get to the right hand side of the track as best as possible here without compromising this run through here to get on the brakes as late as possible here I think I was starting to aim for that whiteboard I slightly missed the apex there that's for sure <laughs> going a bit wide here and I think even though we did that I think this was still our best lap which is quite surprising so definitely some time to be found there through that sequence which you can't really do much in because it's so slow speed then throwing it into the right hand here I was building up confidence through here but I still think you can see I've got a lot of space on the left hand side here so I think I could probably get more speed through there and probably maybe even don't need to break through I think I was just tapping the brake but I think with a bit more confidence I could get through there without having to break at all then that left hander you're going downhill so it's a little bit weird of a sensation but I think generally I think we got through it all right not my favorite corner but not my worst at the same time Braking into here was also quite good because you've got a bit of runoff on the exit here so I could always test the braking point throughout the weekend and I think I've done a pretty good job through there it seemed to get better as the weekend went on braking late getting the speed through the corner and then heading to the final corner which is a little bit daunting because straight on without much of a barrier in the way is the racetrack <laughs> so I was trying my best to just get through here with decent momentum and I think there I was pretty happy with that the overall lap looks quite smooth apart from the running wide moment in the middle of the track uh, into the tight left hander but I was pretty happy in general with that lap I think it felt quite nice wasn't too many mistakes in that one so I think I'd be pretty happy with that one it's far from perfect but a good improvement over qualifying that's for sure now just a couple of clips to end off the race here this was a bit of an interesting moment that happened just in front of me here so you can see the Vauxhall going past and then these two Clio's so one of the Clio's goes a bit wide the silver one cuts back and there's a bit of contact here not once I think twice as well so not sure exactly what was going on there I'm not sure whether they're friends or something but that seemed a little bit unnecessary contact through there but I guess that's always the way with front wheel drive cars you're always understeering and making that correction through a corner like that is always a little bit tough but I don't think it was intentional don't get me wrong but I don't think it was completely unavoidable I think it could have possibly been avoided but it was the end of a long weekend so maybe everyone's getting a little bit rusty so I think this was now the run through the final quarter up to the checkered flag I could see so I'm winding down the mirrors and saying thank you to the guys on the pit wall the marshals up there and saying thank you to the marshals on the exit there as well overall a really fun weekend I really enjoyed it I mean I know I was racing around by myself in terms of racing but you know I had a lot to do in terms of getting out of people's way and just generally making sure that I wasn't a nuisance out there so we finished two 40 minute races and also a 30 minute qualifying session so it was a busy weekend I think probably the most racing I've done over two days so that was a big tick mark over this season I think we handled the weekend quite well got quicker throughout and got a good time out of it as well and had a little holiday I guess you'd say as well I mean Wales in September the end of September isn't really I guess a holiday for most people but it was nice to have a prolonged time at a racetrack it was good to have four or so days away but because of the incoming weather we actually decided to go home early because the weather for Sunday night wasn't looking particularly good so we were a little bit worried about and getting rained in at Anglesey uh, there's a lot of wind going on as well actually the wind was really picking up as we were starting to leave as well so we had to get everything packed down we get the car onto the trailer and just make sure that we got out of Anglesey as quickly as possible and as mentioned there was also this whole worry about a fuel shortage as well so in the morning of the Sunday race I actually went down to the, the local town and got as much fuel as possible for the BMW and also a little bit I think for the 
the Volkswagen that Dad was driving as well. So we just made sure that we were all good in terms of fuel for getting home because of course the journey back from Wales is a long one. Pretty much an entire tank of fuel in the BMW. So luckily we just about managed to get home without any issues there. But that was a little bit of worry, I can't lie, getting maybe stranded on a motorway because every single motorway we drove past on the way home had no petrol at all or diesel so we were a little bit worried but thankfully we managed to get home good but i'm going to throw back to myself a pretty lengthy debrief after this weekend on the way home from anglesey but a good weekend definitely one i'm going to remember but for all good reasons it was a fantastic weekend right so on the way home from anglesey we actually set to come home today we were thinking of camping another night there just to give ourselves a bit more of a relaxed journey home but my dad spotted earlier the weather was getting quite bad at the start of the day <laughs> our awning thing fell down and dad and john had to go to the rescue and make sure that didn't all break so we sort of decided after that point that we're going to leave after the race i guess fortunately unfortunately our race was last so we didn't finish until 3 4 p.m i think so it wasn't that bad like that's still pretty good for a race day but obviously being last meant that we were, were leaving later so yeah we're looking to get home around midnight which which isn't too bad bad to be perfectly honest and well i suppose that depends if we actually do get there on scheduled time but uh, regardless as for the weekend i didn't probably sort of speak about the race after yesterday evening because obviously it finished quite late then we went and watched and did a bit of filming from the night races I think the first race I struggled with uh, quite a bit. I think, unfortunately, there was a bit of build-up after qualifying on one of the, the rear wheels. I think it was the rear left wheel. Had quite a lot of just rubber build-up. Not anything wrong with the car, just the, the car, the Ford K, picking up a lot of rubber as I was going around the track on that, that side. And that was meaning each time the wheel would rotate, you'd hear like a, a judder, like do 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 a bit like a motorway in a way. And I was feeling that all of the time. I was like, I don't know. I don't think I've ever felt this before in a race car. But I think it was just the fact that there was just so much rubber built up on the tyres. And that noise, I guess, made me lack a little bit of confidence throughout that race. The whole thing in general was, was really enjoyable. We had a safety car quite early on, which meant that I could relax a little bit. Because I didn't actually think about it until we got to the end of the race. But it was actually quite exhausting. Um, I'm sort of used to less endurance races like 15 minutes it's probably the longest race we've sort of really done outside the other 30 40 minute race i think we did at snetterton so yeah i definitely felt that in the arms a little bit at the end of the day but it wasn't too bad i think the race was uh, to be unfortunate i couldn't quite get the laps in i wanted in terms of a pace but it is what it is and it was just a good day in general but then going on to today, obviously a late start, so we were watching sort of the racing early on. It was really windy, so I was a bit worried about, but sort of, I guess it was nice that the weather actually turned for the better once it sort of got around to the race before us. The sun sort of started to come out and, you know, it all felt quite good. So we had the sun, you know, beating down on the track for my race, which was nice. Uh, Dad had done a good job just making the tyres all free of, you know, external rubber from uh, pickup around the track and that just made me a little bit more confident. I didn't hear the noise throughout, so we assumed that that, that was the, I guess, the issue, which wasn't really an issue. So this race went a lot better. I went, I think, over two seconds, quicker than my qualifying time, which was nice. I felt a bit more confident in the car and just the, the conditions and everything around. And then I think that was three seconds quicker than my best lap in yesterday's race. So in general, quite happy with that Im improvement. Interestingly, the, the headwind and whatever the other when wind is good where it's pushing you along is quite noticeable in Ford K when you obviously haven't got much power. I think it's got like 65 horsepower or something. So you definitely noticed that, but it did mean that I could break even later than I expected into certain corners. But I did lock up a few times going into the, I guess, uh, not, I should know the corner names, but the one in the middle of the track. I locked up to there a few times. I guess nice to sort of try and find the limit a little bit more and that didn't sort of stop me I wasn't sort of worried once that happened I sort of you know regather my thoughts over the next lap and then you know go again and just try and make sure I didn't push the brakes quite so hard but I think quite happy with how the weekend went it, I think we'd all have liked to maybe have stayed an extra day and seen a bit of Wales on the way back but the weather 
for tonight is not looking especially great uh, into tomorrow morning as well so we're all a bit worried that if we didn't get any sleep or whatever doing the journey after that might be even worse so we're making this trip back now i think it's about like seven or eight hours it will be in total from leaving to when we get back but overall really happy with how the weekend went it was a lot of fun i, I like the format of how the race is uh, laid out so that you can watch all of the other races and do your race which is is quite unique i guess with the way that uh, this club works and instead of doing two races for everything they're doing a one longer race which i think i you know personally i quite like it so i'll probably do a bit of this next year hopefully not of course uh, it's not ideal to be doing it with the ka because of course it's not really racing against anyone even though it is in a class uh, specifically for i think 1400 cc and under cars with eight valves i think that's correct so it does fit a class quite well but of course there wasn't any other runners there's a few people that have run in it over the years but not for this event which is fair enough it's a bit of a unique one in wales wales and scotland i, I guess have uh, understandably not had the biggest grids but still i think it was a pretty impressive field some interesting cars out there a really nice mix uh, it, i could say more interesting classic cars out there there are a few interesting more modern cars but it was mostly the civics Leos, etc that you sort of expect at club meetings but in the classics there was some really quite special stuff i mean personally for me the old nissan skylines really enjoyed watching them and a few things in the 60s and uh mintex um series that also was quite interesting but uh, anyway we've got to focus on getting home it's going to be a long journey here we'll probably do one more stop at least but uh yeah good weekend really enjoyed it and thanks to john my dad and everyone else that helped over this weekend it's been, it's been a good one so uh, we'll see you in the video soon Goodbye.